today we're uh, assembling Bo's heads for his 04 WRX. We already started on valve clearance and bucket thickness and we are going to show you how to do the left side. So these heads came out of my old uh, WRX when I disassembled them. I recorded where the buckets were from so we know what thickness is currently in the head when we assemble it. So when we do calculations for valve clearance we don't have to pull them all back out again. We start just by putting the buckets back in the head. We're starting with left left bank uh, exhaust. Just put a little bit of oil on Alright, so now we can put our camshaft in. Uh, we have Brian Crower, Brian Crower cams, um, so it's going to be a little bit different if you are using stock cams. We got this cam in once already, so it already has a little engine oil on it. We're not using assembly lube right now because we're not doing final assembly. This is just for checking for clearance. So every on a Subaru, every cam sh cam cap is labeled, even the like first cap. And they also have arrows on them so you know which way they're pointing. This one says two exhaust, so this is cylinder two exhaust side cap. And it has an arrow facing this way, so that's front. Put that on two. This one says four exhaust, and the arrow's pointing this way, so that's you go like that. Jerk offs and anything offensive. Yeah, so I had to cut the whole video. <laughs> we just had to delete audio. Three minute video. <laughs> uh. All right. So for the two bolts on the first cap, the torque spec is 9.75 newton meters, and then the rest of them are 20 newton meters. <laughs> Oh, I still remember dropping the bell. Alright, so now I have the exhaust cam installed. Um, Brian Crower cams come with a spec sheet and their recommended valve clearance is eight thousandths for intake and ten thousandths for exhaust uh, so we're going to use that instead of the stock clearance right, so i got a ten thousandths feeler gauge first cam lobe is tight second is also too tight Third is too tight, and fourth is too tight. So we know we're gonna have to do some adjustments. Yeah. I'm gonna step down to an eighth, eight thousandth feeler gauge. And again, too tight for every lobe. So we're gonna step down to a six. Mm -hmm. yeah. So six thousandths is still too tight. Do a four thousandths. Okay. So first lobe was too tight. Second lobe, we are at four thousandths clearance. So I'm gonna write that down on our sheet. Right there. Okay. The rest of them are still too tight. We got a three thousandths feeler gauge now. Okay, 
Okay, so the third lobe's at 3,000 strings. And the fourth lobe is too tight. Are you able that? to plot this one? That's 493 into the fourth one. That's a 500. You might be able to get a measurement off of it, right? Yeah. And that's you probably won't be able to get a measurement from this one. Unless it's what? 492. 492. I pulled the cam back out and I took the, the two ones that we couldn't get readings on, I took the 493 and swapped it over to the 500, it was much thinner, um, and then I swapped the 492 and the 493, uh, we still might not get a reading on that one because it's uh, not much smaller, but um, hopefully we can get at least some sort of reading so we can do calculations to figure out what shim thickness we actually need. So I'm going to start really small with a 2000s feeler gauge on the first cam lobe. First lobe, we could fit a, the smallest feeler gauge I have is a 15 ten thousandths of an inch. It's really tight, but at least we can get a measurement off. Um, and figure out what bucket we actually need. So I'm going to move to the fourth cam lobe. Start with a 2000s gauge. So it actually feels pretty good. It's got a light, light drag. It's got that on 2000s. Uh, intake side is the same process, um, except that the valve clearance is now 8000s of an inch instead of 10000s. Now that we've taken valve clearance measurements for feeler gauges on our known bucket sizes, uh, we can go ahead and do some conversions and calculations to determine what the proper size buckets are in order to meet those clearances. So I'll go ahead and input the bucket thicknesses that we had taken measurements from here. Now that we have our metric values of our bucket thicknesses, we can go ahead and use some simple spreadsheet commands to convert those metric measurements into inches so that we can compare them to our feeler gauge measurements in these specs more easily. Uh, this can also be done by taking our metric value and dividing by 25.4, which is the conversion factor from millimeters to inches. Next, we will input the feeler gauge measurements that we recorded for each of our uh, known bucket sizes. Now, taking a look at our Brian Crower spec sheet, we can determine what our specs are for the intake valves here, which are going to be this 8,000 clearance. Switch back to our spreadsheet and input that 8,000 clearance into all of our intake rows. Now we need to determine our exhaust clearance specs. Look at our exhaust column here. 
and we see that our exhaust valves want a 10 thousandths clearance. We go update our spreadsheet. So now what we can do is uh, create a column with, that calculates the difference between our fueler gauge measurement and our specifications. I happen to take the fueler gauge measurement and subtract the spec in order to give us a positive adjustment when our fueler gauge measurement is larger than our specification. Therefore, when we add that later on to our current bucket size, it'll give us a larger bucket thickness to close that gap and get tighter clearance towards our specifications. We'll go ahead and do that. Then we will have a column to calculate the new bucket thickness in inches. So like I mentioned before, that will take into account our current bucket thickness that we measured from, as well as our now calculated uh, bucket adjustment, positive for our clearances that were too large, and a negative adjustment for our clearances that were too small. Then we will finish up by converting our new bucket thicknesses in inches back into millimeters so that we can order proper sizes. They're spec from Subaru in millimeters. Now we have a column of our new bucket thicknesses and we can go through and see if any of our original ones match in a different spot. Uh, rearrange to optimize how many that we need to buy and essentially minimize our build cost. Thank you.